Constantino. Dole. Pound for pound. Middle Giant Boxing. Last time we spoke, I want to get your thoughts on Earl Spence activating his rematch clause yeah. against Terrence Bud Crawford. Yeah. What's your thoughts on that? Oh, uh, kudos to him for, 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 for having a heart. Mm. Sorry, pardon me. Oh, you've been oh. training all day. Yeah. Um, kudos to him for having a heart to willing to get back in there with somebody, not that just beat him, but like beat him up real bad. He want to get back in the ring, see if he could do it at a different weight class, at this or that. We want to see. I don't think it's going to make a difference. It is not, to me, not going to make a difference because the Arab is a bad fight. I just think the wear and tear, the accidents, the, the Taj Retina, the other tough fights he's been in, the Glass Crawford fight. I don't think the chips is on his side when it comes to a sharpshooter like Terrence Crawford in a rematch. So, but I don't even think it should be rematches for people that, um, if you absolutely get wiped out, the rematch clause to me should be avoided. That's my opinion though. That needs to change. Well, what's your thoughts on people saying at 154, things can be different? Yeah, well, I, I, to me that would make sense if Terrence beat him by just power. But he beat him in every sequence. Speed, power, reaction, footwork, like everything. The man didn't have a good moment in a high level fight. I, he didn't have a good moment in a high level fight because he was in against a higher level fighter. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, you know, like, but uh, I ain't got nothing but respect for Errol Spence, man. Like, you know what I mean? And, and it's sad, too, because, you know, when you talk about these fighters, never forget this, man. Like, don't tell me to talk about it. Don't, don't too many people talk about this, but I'm going to say it here right here for you. Fighters are extremely, extremely tough, are extremely, extremely sensitive. People around fighters can't even give they real natural opinion about fighters because it jeopardized their relationships with it, with with a fighter. Mm -hmm. Fighters will literally get mad at someone or stop talking to them just because someone has an opinion about them or a fight they may win or lose. This is insane. You have fighters that train hard every day, beat people up, tough, big, strong guys. The only thing that can disturb them is someone saying, "Well, I, I think such and such should beat him." Well, I don't really like his style. Well, I don't think he should do that. And automatically, the sensitivity just go to a whole nother level. We're not in the world and the sport where everybody going to think you win all the time or like your mojo or like your system. You should like that. Right. Um, I think, I think if I'm not mistaken, Roy Jones said he walked up to Errol Spence somewhere and tried to shake his hand. And Errol didn't even want to shake his hand just because Roy had an opinion about him. Roy didn't disrespect him or, or, or say nothing disgruntled about him. He just had an opinion about him. And then that made Earl like feel some kind of way. It's sad, man, that you, because everybody's not an individual like me because I'm not never looking for the nearest friend. Or I don't care if somebody have a problem with me if I'm speaking my truth, that's just me. Right. And I don't mind deteriorating a, any type of relationship that I may have or would have had just because I said my opinion or just speaking, you know, honesty. But most people, this kind of stuff bothers. You got most people that can't even be themselves when it comes to fighters because if they have a strong opinion or they go against the grain or they don't pick the fighter to win the fight, these fighters are out here cutting people off and not liking people just because people, certain people ain't on their side. Shame on them. How, how do we fix this or how do we come I mean, to you, a you can't, you, middle there is, ground? There is no really fixing it because... It, I just believe it's just the nature of fighters. Mm. Like, you know what I mean? To me, my, le my, my, my call for disrespect is when people are talking extremely undeservingly disgruntled about you. And it's for no reason, you need to go find that man. And you and that man need to go dash off somewhere. You need to handle that man. Mm. But if someone is somewhere giving their honest opinion about your craft, right. about your art and saying, I don't, like the, I don't like that painting a lot. I think Picasso paint was better. Or I think, John Ramirez paint was better. Well, I think this person paint was better. Why are you, man? I ain't fuck with them no more, man. Why? Because they just had an opinion? Right. This is what goes on. You think your level of thinking can come with maybe time and maturity as far as like accepting, all right, you know what? You, well, I believe this is a, um, 
Uh, my sister Telly Swift, she always tell me people have deeply rooted issues just in life. And I think these type of issues is deeply rooted. A lot of these guys come across like if you played basketball with them as a kid, if you was beating them in the game, they'd say, I don't want to play no more. Give me my ball. Just because the ball is theirs and they're losing in the game, they don't want to play. Like, that's the attitude that it reminds me of. It's like if they're not having their way, then they're a bunch of uh, brats. Right. If someone is not liking or, or if someone is saying, man, I think such and such would beat him, man, he gonna say, what you come gonna beat me, man? I ain't fucking with him. How, no, he ain't do nothing wrong. We right. in a opinionated, forget sport, we in a opinionated world. Right. Like, I could, the same way I could give an opinion, someone could give an opinion on me, as long as you're not disrespectful or extra disgruntled with me or my family, man, we all good. Right. Like, you know, I have no, like, people think you can't be friends with me or not be friends with me because you think Anthony Joshua would knock out Deontay or don't think he, no, we, this is an opinion. I'm hoping that you just be keeping a hundred with me, Malik. Right. I know D your boy, I know y'all gonna train hard, but if it's me, I got Wilder get knocked out between seven and eight. And, and I'm a boxer here. We gonna dialogue about it, shoot shot, why? Because Deontay does this later in the fight and I think AJ can capitalize. Let's like educate each other instead of people taking this shit so personal. Like, it's crazy. You can't say shit in boxing. You can't say shit in boxing. Media can't say nothing really. Um, the cameraman over here is trying to be sneaky. It's almost like everything is some secret in boxing when it's like, yo. It's kind of like if it's like it's politics. Like it's politics. Like, like what My the fuck, Steve man? Kim says, uh, it's just boxing. It's just boxing. That's all it is. This shit been around for years. Everybody acting like they got the Da Vinci code. To stop. Please stop. Because the real cheat code is working hard, staying away from negative people, getting the weirdos out of your life, and being extremely disciplined. That's the cheat code, but that's not fancy enough for people to say, wow, I need to do that. People are always looking for like a certain type of sign. Well, I looked up into the sky and it looked like the cloud shape was like a money sign. So that means the money coming in my hands is itching. That means the money coming. No, no, no. What about the money is coming because you work extremely hard. You got up every day. You was good to people. You did this, that, and the third. You kept your prayers in order. And that's why you get ready to get blessed. It's not because some sign, I picked up this piece of paper after I ate, what is it called? The fortune cookies. People right. were all right here. This is, a fortune cookie has never said nothing negative ever. Mm. They're called fortune cookies. You can't go off of that. I know people that don't even dialogue with people because of their horoscope sign. That's the world that we're in. Yeah. Oh my God, she a Scorpio. I ain't messing with her. Man, he an Aries. You know how they is. Stop. Thanks, you. <laughs> this shit going too far. <laughs> Giving Earl the benefit of the doubt, though, yeah. is it? Maybe he had a bad day or maybe a weight cut or maybe like he wasn't in the mood or, you know, or took oh, it out no, on Roy. Bro, you know what Roy I mean? Jones a legend, man. He just right. gave an, a, a, an opinion about something. He, he didn't, to me, say nothing disgruntled or disrespectful right. about Earl. And actually, I thought he actually gave him props and just when it came to comparing him and Crawford, he just spoke his piece. But to me, that should make not just Earl. It's not an Earl thing. It should make nobody, especially grown men that's in masculine sports, be so sensitive because another person gave an opinion about them saying they think they're going to win or lose in a fight in something that's supposed to be a sport. That would be equivalent to Michael Jordan getting mad at somebody because they thought the Nets was going to beat them in 93 or like, just imagine that. Right. Like, that it. It's insane, man. But to me, that goes on in boxing a lot, like, right? A lot. Like you can't, like you can't say shit. It, you take Malik Scott or people that are real liberated, like myself. Mm -hmm. You can't really say shit in boxing, right? You, like you can't. Shh, don't say that. Don't announce that fight yet, even though they already know the contract signed. Don't announce it. Oh, what you coming them over there? Oh, don't don't say that. What gym they at? Okay, yeah. He said, what about you? This is a masculine sport and more gossiping go on as if it's like filled in an arena full of females. It's like insane, man. I got a great work. I got people waiting for me, okay. brother. I uh, love you, man. Lastly, Come on. Uh, Crawford, all time great. Absolutely, hands down, one of the best ever. Why? Be well, b before the last thing he just did, the accolades up to that, then that. And I believe he's not done yet. Mm. And him calling out Canelo? Oh, I'm uh, the winner yeah. of Canelo Charlo. Yeah, I'm, 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 I don't, I don't, I don't yeah. yeah he got some people rock with it, some people are like, Yeah, he no, got the like skill it. set, he got the will and everything to beat anybody in the world. Will he do that against those guys? Only God knows. I, I don't know. Um, I ain't really like that depth into the actual fight and the right. technical skills of all those guys. Yeah, I'm very familiar with it, but I don't want to give no call yet, but I'm proud of all of them. Terrence Crawford, 
you know, at this moment he's getting everything that he deserved. His flowers. I, I believe he get he could beat anybody in the world besides Jerron Boots and this. Yeah, I said Why it. do you say that? Come on, man. <laughs> That's a topic talking. for a different I'm conversation. Joking. That's my guy from okay. Philly, man. You know I got a rep, bro. And, hey, and there's some big wigs, dude. Want to train with you? Where do they hit you up? Sliding your oh, DMs yeah, or what? The, Come on, man. The Brickhouse way. We're in North Hollywood, man. Sli come sliding your us. DMs, right? Sliding the DMs. Malik King Scott. I'm going to respond. And then, um, and then if I don't respond, I'm still going to respond. Give me time. Mwah. All right. Little Giant Boxing.